As such, it's a reasonable assumption that our devious murder is in there. Nice work. You actually have this whole Chloe thing down pat. And yet I'm still no closer to understanding it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Lucifer running gags. Ah, good morning, detective. Child? Why does stuff like this always happen to me? Jesus, not quite. For this list, we'll be looking at the most frequent sources of comedy that can be found in this fantasy crime series. We're excluding one-off jokes to focus on the gags that have entertained fans throughout the course of the show. Which Lucifer running gag do you think was out of this world? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Maze Threatens Everyone Leave Lucifer Morningstar alone or you'll be too dead to regret it. Due to her status as a demon, Maze loves anything to do with the macabre and takes special delight in the idea of doling out some major pain. Oh no, we're not through here. You assaulted a police officer. Funnily enough, Maze isn't actually seen causing people as much harm as she loves talking about it. As the rest of the characters quickly come up with more peaceful resolutions, much to Maze's annoyance. As far as her circle of friends go, Maze threatens the people she cares about far more than her enemies, as every character has been on the receiving end of this treatment. You know, there was a few tough nuts down there, and there were times I could have really used your blade. In a strangely heartwarming way, this attitude is a way for Maze to show that she cares about someone, since she's equally as protective towards the one she repeatedly threatens. Number 9. Ella Hugs Everyone You're a newbie, aren't you? Oh, hey, yeah. Ella Lopez. If there's one person no one can resist getting attached to, it would have to be Ella. Known for her infinite levels of optimism, Ella makes sure she keeps everyone around her happy, and that involves an outright show of affection. I can't stay mad at you. Aww. It doesn't matter if she knows the person or not, as Ella goes in for that big hug, whoever it may be. Oh, sorry, we haven't officially met yet. I'm Ella. A man -a -deal. This serves as an icebreaker for Ella, who usually introduces herself with one of her trademark hugs to showcase her friendly nature. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Ella. The humor comes from the character's surprised reactions to this unexpectedly warm reception. Not that Ella really notices it anyway. Then again, the fact that even God appreciates Ella's hugs proves that this habit has heaven's stamp of approval. Your dad? Hmm. Oh my god! It's so amazing to meet oh. you! too. <laughs> and I just want to thank you for all the support. It hasn't gone unnoticed. Number 8. Lucifer's Nicknames for Trixie Yeah, child, this should buy you plenty of juicy words, you swear I won't. <laughs> Having lived in hell for centuries and engaged in a wildly hedonistic lifestyle before meeting Chloe, Lucifer is clueless around her daughter. Well. Welcome to the club of parental deceit, child. To this end, he calls Trixie a number of creative terms. Why don't you go and deal with the donation thingy and I can uh, take the little sugar plum fairy to school. Because of Lucifer's initial dislike of children, Trixie's absolute adoration of him tends to stump Lucifer even more. You are lucky my daughter likes you so much. Yes, I'm starting to respect the deceptive little parasite. <laughs> Oh, well, that's nice. For her part, Trixie doesn't mind any of Lucifer's nicknames, and that's probably why he keeps changing these up so frequently. To Lucifer's credit, most of these names are a response to Trixie invading his space and are supposed to be, in Lucifer's quirky manner, a way to show his affection for her. It's gonna cost you. Oh, well, name your price, urchin. Number 7. Amenadiel's Inability to Understand Humans Didn't you get my text? What you mean, a string of nonsensical emojis? Fire, sword, donut, spaceman, clock, dancing lady, flashlight, thumbs up. How am I supposed to know what that means? While Lucifer prides himself on his ability to read people better than most, his elder brother is really quite the opposite. As God's first angel, Amenadiel spent most of his life thinking he was better than humans, meaning he had no idea how to interact with them when he was forced to. Although he's come to appreciate what humanity has to offer, Amenadiel still doesn't fully understand the concept of blending in. You see, I respect the rule of human law, which is why I'm seeking your assistance in a matter of utmost importance. This lands him in moments where he's left hopelessly out of place, usually leaving Lucifer embarrassed at his brother's antics. Come on, 
Lucy? Come cuddle a rug with your big bro. Oh, no, 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 no. It's also a way to highlight his inherently naive nature, as Amenadiel's tendency to be completely literal makes him misunderstand things that should otherwise be totally obvious. You are the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Thank you. The question was, do you know of anyone who would want to hurt Sister Victoria? Number six, characters imitating each other. Great. I'll just be here working on the case, looking for bad guys to bring into justice. The benefit of Lucifer featuring characters with such contrasting personalities is that a lot of humor comes from them making fun of each other. I didn't expect the devil to be driving around LA. Oh yes, I live here actually. I do whatever I want. Ooh, like what? Drink, mostly, and insult people. You punks. <laughs> this started out with Chloe's knack for copying Lucifer's snooty attitude, and has grown to the point where just about everyone's imitated each other. I'm Lucifer Morningstar. I can play the piano, and I'm a fancy British man. It's a hilarious way for the characters to see how others perceive their behavior, although their mannerisms are imitated to the highest comedic potential. Just be Lucifer. I'm here for your money and your women. Interestingly, the show finds ways to turn this into part of the plot as well, with Michael and Lucifer both imitating each other without anyone realizing it. Once I shot Lucifer to prove he was the devil, and now I'm shooting you to prove you're not. And although imitation is supposed to be a form of flattery, Lucifer turns it into the greatest source of mockery. As good at cosplay as Ms. Lopez is, I never was as adept at subterfuge as my twin. Number five, Lee Garner appears in season premieres. So what do you want? Freedom? Starting from the second season premiere, it's become a tradition of the show to feature an appearance from Lee Garner. The hapless thief bites off more than he can chew with Lucifer in their first meeting, with the devil hardly considering Lee the threat he wants to be. Look, I know you don't want to shoot me, Mr. What's your name? Set out, bitch. Mr. Set out, bitch, tell me, what is it you really desire? I just want to get out of here, man. Of course, Lee's popular name is coined by Lucifer in the third season premiere, which he never gets to shake off. Well, if it isn't Mr. Set Out Bitch. All things considered, Lee's an accurate depiction of how any person would react if they came across the devil, as he's left traumatized after each interaction. So, welcome to hell. I'm in hell? I, I don't understand. However, Lucifer seems to have a fondness for Lee, and it's because of the connection between them that the two ultimately help each other out when they most need it. Mr. Set Out Bitch, is it possible? Says the dude that just fell out of the sky. Number four, Lucifer calls Daniel Detective Douche. Wow, Detective Espinosa. I didn't know you had the stones. No more detective douche. Well, not today at least. Lucifer's carefree and easygoing nature isn't exactly a good fit for Daniel in the first season, at a time when the latter carries a largely stuck up attitude. Yes, has something happened? I'm guessing by the looks of it with Dan, perhaps? Mm. You mean Detective Douche? Taking an instant dislike to him, Lucifer has the perfect name for Dan that he loves to throw in his face. Hell, ever since we first met. Detective Douche. Dan, I, uh, my name is Dan. Or Detective Espinosa. Dan's lack of response only serves to make it more fun for Lucifer, as he comes up with new and creative ways to call Dan his favorite nickname. Detective douche. Daniel, Dan. Why didn't you put down the knife? Hmm? To Lucifer's credit, he does ease up as their friendship grows, and Dan becomes less douchey, although he doesn't hold back on mocking Dan like before if he's in the mood. Detective douche. If you want to see something really scary, wait until you see what your new all soy diet is doing to your bone density. More than anything, it's the way Lucifer says the word with such enthusiasm that makes it so entertaining. Gosh, I wish I got that on video. Oh, I can get that on video. Hold on. Deuce cam. Number three, Daniel's pudding. My pudding's gone. I'm sorry? In the break room fridge, my pudding, clearly labeled Dan, it's gone. Not the first time either. After mellowing down considerably from his initial obnoxious ways, Daniel becomes something of a pushover. Most of the characters take delight in messing with him, and stealing his pudding is the easiest way to do so. Who stole my pudding again? Huh? 
Mark Woods. Even though Dan takes extra measures in the hope that no one will take it, that doesn't stop others from snagging it from right under his nose. Completing this running gag is Dan's habit of losing his mind over this, as a meltdown usually follows whenever he finds his pudding missing. His strong feelings for his favorite dessert are confirmed when a mind-controlled Dan reveals his contempt for Lucifer stems mainly from his pudding-stealing ways. I know you ate my pudding. <laughs> Number two, Lucifer openly tells everyone he's the devil, but nobody believes him. Bless you. Have you seen the face of the devil? Oh, every morning in the mirror, pal. Exactly. He's in all of us. Lucifer is accused of a lot of things, but a liar is never one of them. What the hell are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? He's the devil and you've known about it all this time? I have never hidden my devilness from anyone. It's funny that characters are surprised to learn about his devilish truth, considering he tells them straight to their faces. Hello? Family, we've met Lucifer, Morningstar. Lucifer, Morningstar, as in... The devil, yes, exactly. In fact, every character he meets mistakes his claim of being the devil to be part of Lucifer's exaggerations, and it's certainly worth watching their reactions once they realize he's been telling the truth all along. No more lies. No more metaphors. Very well. Mostly, though, Lucifer is never able to make people believe him. Not that he puts much effort into convincing them anyway. I mean, hey. We all got our quirks, right? Mm. Mine is that I'm like, actually the devil. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> the long-running aspect of this gag is so notable that Lucifer even indulges in it when he's on another show entirely. I am the devil. No, you're not. Not to me. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Trixie's love of chocolate cake, because she'll even blackmail her own father if there's cake involved. You're just gonna have to go with it, okay? What's in it for me? What do you want? Chocolate cake. Done. For a whole year. Lucifer's constant disappointment at people's more boring desires. What good is a superpower when no one's any fun? What is it you'd really want to do? I, uh... Yeah. I... I want to skip my morning workout sometimes. Boring? Just chill on the couch and watch Master Chef. This is the fantasy life of a postmenopausal housewife. Come on, Ty. There must be something deeper. Chloe's inebriated behavior, because this is when we see the fun side of Detective Decker. Detective, this is unexpected. You said the door's always open, and I'm walking through it. Unannounced appearances in Lucifer's apartment. Looks like the door's always open. Well, that was fast. Afraid of what's inside. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Lucifer takes the wrong message from Linda's therapy. I need you to help me control my emotions. Well, emotions can't be controlled, Lucifer. What? Wasn't that your entire job? My job is to help you understand your emotions. It's not easy getting Lucifer to change his mind, something Dr. Linda is more than aware of. You know, Lucifer has a tendency to project his issues onto external sources. And what he really needs to do is face his issues head on. Finally! <laughs> Although he respects her opinion, Lucifer routinely misinterprets her advice according to how he feels and does whatever he wants anyway. But there's also the possibility that- No, 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 that no. That's very good. Thank you, Doctor. I know what to do now. When Lucifer inevitably lands himself in a bigger conundrum than before, he accuses Linda of pushing him toward it, even though it's clearly his own fault. During their sessions, there's always that one point where it seems like Lucifer's just talking to himself as Linda ponders over the many deep-seated issues he's blatantly ignoring. Yes, yes. <laughs> it seems obvious now, actually. <laughs> I need to have sex with her. Uh, that's not what I said. No, 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 you're a genius. I mean, that's the best way to lose interest, right? It doesn't get any better when Lucifer brings someone else along in his sessions with Linda, as things tend to spiral out of control with no one really learning anything. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.